Unlike many railroads of the USA, the mighty Pennsylvania Railroad invested into high-performance electric locomotives. For those who would be able to move mountains, people, and everything in between. These locomotives that we'll be going through tonight will be the last electric locomotives used and built for the Pennsylvania Railroad. My name is Jamie, and if you are interested in these sorts of videos, do give this video a like and subscribe as it helps out a lot. Next week's video will be about Amtrak's SDP-40F and how it impacted Amtrak's further diesel electric development on locomotives such as the F40PH, Amtrak Genesis and the Siemens Chargers. So tune in next week to find out more. In our previous Pennsylvania Railroad videos, we covered locomotives such as the very first electric locomotive for the Pennsylvania Railroad, which was the Boxy DD1. Their very first AC overhead locomotive, the FF1, a monster locomotive that was designed to do coal drags on the Alleghenies. It was so powerful that it would be able to snap couplers and push boxcars off the track. Later, we also discussed going into the main electric fleet such as the P5As and its GG1 body style and the very iconic GG1. Well, we also went into parts of the iconic GG1 history from the very start in the Pennsylvania Railroad to the very end in Amtrak service. The first locomotive we are going through, just like the very first video, will be a DD class locomotive. The very first one we are actually going through is the DD2. This would actually be the improvement and simpler version of the GG1. Only one would ever be built, and it was built at the Pennsylvania Railroad Juanita Workshops on February 7th, 1938. The sole DD2 would be numbered 5800. The original plan of the DD2s would be to be used on the electrification west of Harrisburg, hoping to connect Pittsburgh to the electric network. Due to this extension never being built, further DD2s would not ever be built, and the plans would be shelved. Despite being an overall simpler and improved design, the Pennsylvania Railroad had decided the GG1s were good enough and it was easier to reduce complications by not adding another class of locomotive. It would use a 2BB2 con wheel configuration. In comparison, the GG1 would use a 2C plus C2 wheel configuration. One downside of the removal of two pairs of driving wheels, combined with the slightly less weight than the GG1, would mean that the DD2 would have slightly less tractive effort than the GG1. However, due to the improvements in technology since the GG1s were built, the DD2s would be slightly more powerful in terms of sheer horsepower, despite actually having less motors than the GG1. Due to the DD2 being a one-off locomotive, it would remain in odd jobs and would be used occasionally in the Baltimore Tunnel as a helper unit. Due to the gearing of the DD2, it would actually mainly be used on slower trains and freight trains as it was a limited to 70 miles per hour. There was no reason it couldn't be raised to a high top speed to match the GG1 though. It would later be scrapped in September 1962. Pennsylvania Railroad would be interested in a newer electric locomotive. It would put out a tender for a new locomotive in the 1950s. The different companies would deliver their respective locomotives in 1952. General Electric would deliver the four E2Bs. The E2B would be a Bobo locomotive that was eminently permanently coupled with a E2B. Individually, they would produce 2,500 horsepower with 35,000 pounds of tractive effort. The E2B would actually use AC traction motors, combined with a tap changer similar to existing PRR locomotives such as the P5A and the GG1. Due to this, it could work in multiple with other Pennsylvania Railroad electrics. Pennsylvania Railroad would also purchase the two other demonstrator units originally intended for the Great Northern Railway in 1953. The E2Bs would be numbered 4939 and 4944. 
they would normally be paired up with other P5 Zanes on freight runs, and they would be scrapped in 1964. Baldwin and Westinghouse would match with two different locomotives, the E2C and E3B. Baldwin would produce the locomotive itself, while Westinghouse would produce the electrical equipment used in the locomotives. The difference between the E3B and E2C was the trucks used. The E2C would use two three-axle trucks, and the E3B would use three two-axle trucks. In comparison, the E2B, the Baldwin-Westinghouse locomotives, would use DC motors combined with a mercury arc rectifier to convert the AC overhead to DC power for the motors. Like the E2B, both the E2C and E3B would run as per semi-permanently coupled sets. They would have a top speed of 63 miles per hour and individually would produce 3000 horsepower. Now it is something to note that because of the way these units were powered, they would not be able to be multiple united with other Pennsylvania Railroad locomotives. The E3B and E2C would be scrapped in 1964. The Pennsylvania Railroad would purchase seven second-hand electric locomotives from Great Northern. These were the FF2, or the Y1 box cabs as they would be known on the Great Northern. They would originally be built by Alco, with electrical equipment coming from General Electric. Eight in total of these Y1s, or FF2s, would be built and delivered between 1927 and 1930 to the Great Northern. They would be a 1C plus 1 that used tra DC traction motors. In order to convert the AC overhead to DC for the motors, you would use a motor generator set in order to rectify the AC current into DC. In this process, they would actually produce close to about 3000 horsepower. Later on, they would end up in Pennsylvania Railroad's hands when the Great Northern would dieselize the Cascade Tunnel in 1956. Due to this, the electric locomotives were no longer needed and the electric overhead would be decommissioned and taken down. They would be sold to the Pennsylvania Railroad who would purchase seven as to be run units and one as a spare parts unit. This spare parts unit was 5011 and it would be known as the one with the FT cabs instead of the conventional box cab design. Before entering service, they would be repainted from the Great Northern Empire Builder Scheme into the Pennsylvania Railroad Freight Scheme, and they would be modified to fit the clearance restrictions. These modifications would include the removal of the rooftop bus connectors, regenerative braking, removal of side doors, and grab irons. They would also be fitted with multiple unit connectors. They would later be used mainly on helper duties between Columbia and Thorndale due to their low top speed of 30 miles per hour. They would perform well on the railways, however, they would all be scrapped between 1960 and 1966, with the majority of the FF2 class being scrapped in 1966. The last locomotive that we'll be talking about today is the Pennsylvania E44. Now, the GG1 itself would fulfill the passenger and fast freight niche. However, what the Pennsylvania Railroad lacked was an electric locomotive that would be good on heavy freight duty. The Pennsylvania Railroad would take interest in the new locomotives used by the Virginian Railway. The ELC would perform so well on the Blue Ridge Mountains that they would impress Pennsylvania Railroad so much that they would approach GE to build 66 improved variations of the original ELC. They would look very much like the original ELC, however, there were some big differences. They were more powerful for a start, 1100 more horsepower. An easy way to tell the difference between the E44 and the ELC was a pantograph. On the E44, it would have two single arm pantographs while on the ELC itself, it would have a single double arm pantograph. 60 of these new E44s would be built with Ignatron rectifiers, and the last six would be built with the new and revolutionary 
silicon diode rectifiers. The E44 would produce 4400 horsepower. Some other subtle modifications that would be made later would be 22 E44s would be upgraded to the E44A standard by Penn Central. This package would include upgraded traction motors and overall be upgraded to have silicon rectifiers. More were planned to be upgraded, however, this was prevented by the Penn Central bankruptcy. Conrail would actually upgrade the rest of the E44s to have silicon diode rectifiers, however, one important thing to note is that this had no impact on the terms of horsepower or tractive effort. One special E44, 4453, would be upgraded by Conrail in 1980 with newer electronics and upgraded to 6000 horsepower. It would later be made redundant as Conrail would de-electrify their freight operations. Later, 4453 would be tested by General Electric in 1984, but it would end up being scrapped with some components being used in later locomotives. Operationally, the E44s would arrive in the Pennsylvania Railroad's hands from 1960 to 1963. They would replace the 30-year-old P5As very quickly. They would remain on freight duties even through the Penn Central years and would later be transferred into Conrail in 1976. However, it is important to also know that they did function as the occasional backup locomotives. There is evidence to be seen that the occasional E44 would be used in a pinch when let's say a GG1 broke down. New Jersey Transit would actually acquire some and later Amtrak would purchase eight E44s back from New Jersey Transit. However, these would never turn a reel in revenue service as issues with transformers leaking toxic coolant would prevent them from doing so. The eight Amtrak E44s would be numbered 500 to 507 and they would be retired in 1991 when the Amtrak P32 eight WHs would enter service and they would take over the 500 series of numbers. One of the Amtrak E44s would actually be donated to the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania on April 1991. It would be repainted from the Amtrak paint scheme to the original Pennsylvania Railroad black and numbered back to 4465, the very last one. The E44 would be the last new addition to the electric locomotive fleet for the Pennsylvania Railroad. Eight years later with the Penn Central merger, the Penn Central Railroad electric fleet would do incredibly well as a whole just by showing up. The E44s would serve five different railroads and would have their last run in 1981 under Conrail. It would be remembered fondly by its own crew and they would be the last electric locomotive of the Pennsylvania Railroad and it would only be retired by Amtrak in 1991. Despite their age, the iconic GG1s of the Pennsylvania Railroad electric fleet would be able to show up the EP5 and would later replace the EP5 on its passenger duties on cracked trains, such as the Montreola. Even far into the Amtrak days, the GG1 would still be needed to run regular trains as the Metroliner that had hoped to send the GG1s into retirement were a disappointment. The GG1s would eventually have 48 years of continuous service. It would also only be replaced when the AEM7s would start to show up in mass. Thank you for your continued support and it's really appreciated. Recently, my pet rabbit had to get vaccinated just to make sure he's safe in the future. And the ads that you've been watching have contributed to paying for his well-being. It's made a big difference. And I just wanted to say thank you very much. I hope that I always make content that you guys really enjoy and watch. And it's made a big difference to me. It's made me sort of look at trains in a very different way. You know, and I love this chance to sort of talk about trains and it's been really good. Now, I'll let you guys go, and I just want to say thank you from me, my partner, and my pet rabbit, Mr. Morris. Thank you very much, and have a good night.